Hi everyone. Okay, today we'll see a few more interview questions uh, which we frequently face in interviews. Okay. Uh, the first one. So we already have like uh, five to six sets already we have uploaded in YouTube. So if anyone not uh, verified, you can go and see that the previous interview question. So this is a other set what we are going to upload today. Okay. So the first one is, okay, suppose. So they're frequently asking the question here, even I asked uh, in while well, taking into this question. So how many number of input parameters we can pass to the unconnected lookup? So out of 10 people, five people will, for sure they will say wrong answer for this question. So the question here is, how many input parameters we can give or pass to unconnected lookup. Okay, so majority they say wrong answer to this question. So usually if they learn somewhere, okay, so they just give like only one input condition to just explain how this unconnected look, lookup works. Okay, but if you come to the real time, so we will pass n number of inputs to the unconnected lookup, but the return value, as everyone knows that only one value will get it. But there is a possibility if you want to return the multiple values also. But what is the functionality of unconnected lookup? So as per the input condition, it will give you the return value as a only one value. Okay, so that is a functionality. But the question here is how many input parameters we can pass. So there is no limit. So remember here, so we can pass n number of, I mean, you can pass 100 input parameters also based on that condition, unconnected lookup works. That means there is no limit. Okay, so please remember, there is no limit to that particular input parameters. This you have to remember. So if I ask this question, so they're simply saying that only one input parameter we can. We can return only one port as an output or return, we can return the one port value. It means only one value there. But coming to that input, don't confuse, we can give n number of inputs Inputs may many, but you will get only one value as the output. That is what you have to remember. So second question here is, they may ask directly, what is my factless fact table? Or they may ask difference between, okay, difference between, Fact table and factless table. Sorry, factless fact table. Okay. So if they ask a direct question, can you explain what is meant by factless fact table? So if you see that a fact table is a child table to the dimension table. Okay. Dimension table is a parent table and fact table is a child table. Okay, that's for first you have to remember. But coming to that fact table concept, so what is meant by factless fact table? So fact table, what is meant by fact table? Fact table, it contains measurable values and keys, correct? But coming to the uh, factless fact table, we just contain only keys, no measurable values. Okay, that is what a factless fact table. So what is meant by factless fact table? Factless fact table contain only keys, no measurable values. If you ask difference between fact table and factless fact table, you can say that so fact table contain keys and measurable values, but factless fact table contain only keys, no measurable values. These two are frequently asked. Other one is okay. Mm. complex mapping. This also one more 
frequently asked question. What is maybe complex mapping? So can you explain? So what is the complex mapping you have implemented in your project? So if you ask this question, so what is maybe complex mapping? So if you learn somewhere what they do, simply they will show you a simple mapping, how to create source and target in between some business logic. I mean, they just have a few transformations. So here you have to understand that complex mapping does nothing but it contains a, a complex business requirement or it I mean it contains a complex logic or uh, more uh, logics and also it it will contain more transformations so if you see this three you can say that that is a complex mapping let's see many people are saying that if it while taking the interview if i ask that can you tell me what is a complex mapping they're simply saying that scd type 2 is a complex mapping nothing in scd type 2 scd type 2 is just a simple source that will have a target in between user lookup transformation and expression and we have an update strategy and sequence generator that's it so nothing complex in that so don't say scd type 2 is a complex mapping so what is the requirement? I mean, so uh, how we can say it's a complex mapping? Complex mapping is it should contain a, a complex or very tough business requirement, or it, it contains a difficult logics and it should contain more transformations. That you can say that as a complex mapping. So for example, you are creating a uh, on, on mapping. So it contains like suppose each transformation have a different logic. So that also you have to, each logic is depending on other logic. So you are using like 10 to 20 transformations. Such kind of thing you can say a complex mapping. Okay, don't say a CD type two is a complex mapping. Okay, that is what uh, about complex, but this is also a frequent question. What is a complex mapping? Can you explain? Okay, so other one is, uh, Okay, so this one a complex mapping. And okay, sometimes they ask, can you explain what are the different types of dimensions you have? Okay, so this is the again okay, data. I mean, data version concepts question, and this also data version concepts question. Okay, what is the different types of dimensions? So we have a different types of okay dimensions we have. So we have a SCD. So slowly changing dimensions. One is, if they ask, you can say a series and you have a conformed dimension. Okay. And we have a degenerated dimension. Okay. And if we have a role play dimension and we have a, sometimes there is a dimension called a bridge dimension that's a junk dimension sorry that's a junk dimension yes like that, so we have many dimensions. If you say at least few in this, that will be fine. Okay, so just a new moment. The last question here is four we have. So five, the one more frequently asked question here is, how many number of repositories 
you can create informatical. How many number of repositories? Okay, so <clears throat> the main thing is we are learning outside. So usually you will have only one repository. So nowadays, some people they are having two repositories. So one is like develop and one is for testing. But if you come to the real time, so there will be many repositories as per the project. Okay. So the, again, here also you can say that there is no limit. Okay. Some projects they will have three. Some projects they may have four. Some projects they may have five. So that is that that's also not constant. Okay. So that is also based on their requirement. They create the repositories. Okay. So you can say that. Okay. So here also there is no limit. You can create any number of repositories as per their requirement. Okay. So many people are saying that only I have one repository. So it never happens, only one repository in real time. Okay. So you will have three, you will have four, you will have five. So that is that's also changing. Okay. So never say that it's like only one. So one, it never happens in real time. So you can say that at least three. So three will be the default. So okay, so the again based on the project, it may change. But don't say only one repository you have it. So if you say one repository directly, so you can they will reject it because it never worked on that. So if you worked, so you, you know that how many number of repositories you have it. So if you say only one repository, then you will be rejected because based on that, you will come to know you're not working. So that is also a hard to remember. So these are the few frequently asked questions. So just uh, go through this. So we'll see if anyone not gone through that previous videos. So we have already five to six interview questions. I mean, five to six sets we have already uploaded. Go through that. So then come back to this. Okay. So that's all for today. We'll see you next time with other topic.